Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It is the 1st of June already. Can you believe it? We're just rolling right into summer, and today is the official beginning of what we would call meteorological summer. Now, you've heard that climatological summer is probably a little bit different. Uh, we would say it's the first day of summer if you're talking climate periods as we get closer to or on uh, the summer solstice, which would be around the uh, 21st or the 22nd. Uh, but as far as weather logs go, we like to say June is the very beginning of summer and June, July and August would be the summer months. Uh, so here you go. I can say welcome to summer because I'm a meteorologist. There you go. You heard it here first. If you'd like to check on your summer forecast, no matter what part of the state you're in, maybe except the North Coast, uh, you can call 1-800-472-0391. You can certainly call this number if you're in the North Slope Borough but it's gonna sound a little bit more like it's still winter there. A lot of low clouds, flurries, and fog. Now, if you'd like to check that online, weather.gov slash Alaska is the place to go. One thing you should check out, if you are an aviator, you need to take a look at the Alaska Aviation Weather Units page. It is going to change in the next uh, couple weeks or so. Uh, we have that new page available for you, and you can go to the old page. There will be a link there as well. But if you go to the new page, weather.gov slash AAWU, which of course is short for Alaska Aviation Weather Unit, you can get a glimpse at how the new page is going to look and work and try it out. Please try and break it. We want to make it work for you because we know that information is critical to your daily operation. So please go check it out and then tell us how bad or how good it is, what works, what doesn't work, and what we should get better because we're still in that fix-it mode and that design phase where we can do that a little bit easily. So um, make sure you check that out. You can always let me know anything about the show, anything about uh, any of the other services that we provide. I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. David.Snyder at NOAA.gov is the best way to reach me and the team. Here is a look at the headlines for today. Fire danger, uh, as you would expect, with dry weather and some breezes across the interior. And oh, by the way, it's now summer. You would expect the fire danger is growing, and it is growing across the interior, but not really just the interior. It's moving into the, uh, the upper Kuskokwim. It's moving into the lower and middle Yukon valleys as well. So a lot of changes in drier weather over the last several weeks has promoted that growth of fire danger. We'll talk about where here in just a moment. Warmer temperatures that we've had today, which pushed many locations into the 70s and even a few low 80s across uh, places like Big Lake for South Central, that's going to ease up a little bit tomorrow. Expect more clouds. And a chance for some showers closer to the mountains, but not really for everywhere along the road system. So not quite as hot tomorrow. Showers and breezy weather continues for southeast uh, with a low in the Gulf. That's really no surprise. That should continue. You might even get a thunderstorm or two out of that around the Dixon entrance. And for my friends up in the Arctic coast, cold and fog will continue for you. Uh, there is a, a pretty decent opportunity with high pressure sitting along the coast that the conditions you have now will pretty much continue into the next 24 to 36 hours. There may be some breaks in the clouds, but overall it looks like that uh, general weather pattern is not going away just yet. Now on to fire danger. We have a red flag warning out for tonight and into tomorrow uh, for the upper Kuskokwim Valley. Of course, that means that conditions are ripe for uh, faster fire growth in that general area. Uh, things that are driving this would be the winds, a breeze at least, and low humidity. Uh, so conditions are certainly dry and capable of supporting fire as far as the weather uh, concerns go. So red flag warning there. If you are in those communities, you probably know what that means. The fire danger as a whole has been growing. In the last couple of days, we've seen uh, drier trends across uh, the western and uh, eastern interior locations. They're not so much in south central, but even that has picked up a little bit more across the Susitna Valley uh, into um, uh, parts of the uh, Kinnick Valley in the western side of Anchorage and the western Kenai Peninsula. Even Bristol Bay is seeing uh, high to extreme levels of fire danger. If you look at the fire weather index, that is the level that we're using there. And anything above 35 uh, drops us up into the extreme range there. So along Golcana, Glen Allen, uh, also around Toke, uh, up toward uh, Chicken, and then uh, Eagle, and northward along the upper Yukon Valley, there are certainly some spots that are pretty doggone dry. 
Uh, again, no surprise considering the late weather and uh, certainly the intense sunshine and drier air all combined into that fire weather index that we're showing here. So learn more about that anytime. You can do that uh, on our website, Alaska. <laughs> and try that again, weather.gov slash Alaska. Alaska.gov probably has some information too. Good site. Here's a look at the satellite picture for this Thursday. High pressure is in charge of the interior. Look at it just scooching all the clouds out of the way. We can see an easterly wave trying to work its way in. With that comes more moisture across southeast. You're getting the rain and some of the breezes from that already with low pressure in the Gulf. But this wave moving out of the continental parts of Canada uh, is something that you typically see in the summertime. And with heat and maybe some additional moisture there, it wouldn't be a big surprise to see some showers developing and maybe even a few thunderstorms. This is not the biggest, baddest wave of them all. We've seen these typically in the summertime. Uh, and some of these really hold together with a lot of juice and a lot of storms. Right now, that doesn't seem to be the, the setup just yet. But if you look out to the west, you can see that offshore breeze and the drier air moving off of the YK Delta, also pushing away some of the Bering Sea fog. And you can see an uh, area of low pressure across the central and western Aleutians. That is uh, pushing a front closer to Kiska and Adak there. Not, not a really a strong system at this point. And a look up north shows just a few fair weather clouds across the south slopes of the Brooks Range. But you can also see a lot of fog uh, right across the north slope. And of course, the uh, satellite picture kind of comes and goes there in the final frames. But uh, high pressure in charge of that will lock in uh, the low clouds and probably some fog and flurries for you. So there it is, high pressure just uh, around uh, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse, 1,016 millibars there. Uh, not terribly strong, but it is feeding into the system that's pushing moisture from continental Canada uh, into the central and western Alaska. You know, most of Canada is continental. We should just say Canada. How about that? Western Canada. That's a better way to say it. Across southeast, periods of rainfall there with low pressure in the Gulf at 996 millibars. we got a slightly a more organized system here off the Pacific Northwest. All of this is channeling moisture north into the eastern Gulf. On the western Gulf, things are dry, and you can see that uh, drier air flowing out into the eastern Bering Sea. Here's our low pressure system at 1,004 millibars in the western chain. High pressure across the western Bering and all of that again, keeping uh, the active weather really out of the Bering Sea and the West Coast at this point. Tonight, uh, we expect to see that trough of low pressure stretching all the way from Western Canada, got that right, into Bristol Bay. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, activity forming along that just yet, but as you get into South Central Prince William Sound, there's signs that the moisture is kind of being pulled in here. You can see that moving into the eastern sections of the Copper River Basin, uh, the Wrangell St. Elias region, and then uh, more persistent wetter weather moving through southeast. Most of what you'll see in the Gulf is just kind of showery, disorganized weather. High pressure across the north, locking in the low clouds, so not a very good organized system for any substantial snow, much less really measurable snow, but you'll probably see snowflakes. We'll call that flurries, fog, and maybe even freezing fog from time to time. Uh, the low out in the west starts to creep eastward, but you can see this bump right here in the pressure pattern. That's a high pressure ridge, so it's really trying to hold that back and stabilize the weather out in front of that. Uh, even so, the low will move a little bit further eastward tomorrow, and the pressure pattern kind of gets squished together. And because of that, the winds are going to pick up a little bit more across the central and eastern chain all the way out toward Nikolsky and maybe uh, Dutch Harbor and Unalaska, but you'll be on the more of the fair weather side of that, at least for a while, probably picking up some fog in the region. Low pressure across the Gulf uh, strengthens just a little bit more. You can see the moisture is filling in here across the eastern Gulf all the way down to uh, the Pacific Northwest. And with this wave moving through from south to north, places around the Dixon entrance might get a few showers or stronger showers, perhaps even a thunderstorm there. So don't be surprised if you uh, see some lightning or, or hear the rumble of thunder there across southern southeast tomorrow. Across the northern part of the Gulf and into south central, Kodiak Island, Kenai Peninsula, we're going to start to see some isolated showers in the region. Clouds will pick up and it will be a much cooler day compared to what we've experienced today once those clouds come in and at least shut down some of that really direct sunshine. That'll, that'll make a big difference. Across the uh, international line, a few showers and storms there. Uh, most of the showers we'll see on the road system uh, will probably be a little bit closer to the mountains. So eastern Anchorage, the Talkeetnas, uh, the Alaska Range, west of Big Lake and the Susitna Valley. Up north, clouds are building across the Brooks Range. Showers on the south side, that would be rain on the north side, probably just flurries and some areas of fog. You might catch a little bit of a break toward the end of the day, though, around Atkasuk and up around Barrow there. So if, if you have to wait for the weather to clear up a little bit more to fly, the afternoon looks a whole lot better as far as visibility goes uh, than probably the first part of the morning. Saturday, uh, more of the same really. High pressure backs off the coast just a little bit. You'll see some pockets of fog there. 
Uh, there's a chance that we'll see some dry patches from time to time, but the overall pattern doesn't change too much, so you'll have to time it just right. A trough of low pressure sits along the Alaska Range and stretches into western Canada. And along that boundary, as that moisture fills in, we'll start to see a better chance for uh, showers and thunderstorms, especially in the heat of the day. Across the Alaska Range, showers there, maybe a thunderstorm in the upper Kuskokwim Valley region. Again, with dry conditions, that would be something to keep track of. And low pressure across the southern bearing into the eastern chain and the western Alaska Range. Uh, that will draw up some stronger southerly winds and some slightly colder winds coming in behind that for the central and western chain as that uh, starts to dry things out a little bit. But it does look like all rain for you all the way up toward Nunavak Island, the Pribilof, St. Matthew, and uh, just across the very western end of the YK Delta. For southeast, several other waves are going to be rotating around this low pressure system. Each one of them will kick off another round of showers for you, but it, it doesn't look like there's a huge uh, risk for thunderstorms. There might be another one or so across the Stevens Passage southward into the Clarence Strait region as we get into Saturday, but again the threat remains fairly low and generally isolated. High pressure across the northern Gulf will still try and keep things clamped down across south central. So once again it doesn't look like a big washout as we head into the weekend again, uh, just like it was uh, you know kind of cold and damp for your Memorial Day weekend, but the clouds around the region will be present. It'll keep temperatures down a little bit and showers mainly focused toward the higher terrain. Might see a slightly better chance for some wetter weather as we get into Saturday and Sunday. That's how things shape up over the weather plan. Here's a look at temperatures today. 50s and 60s for southeast. Juneau around 3 o'clock was at 61 degrees. Sitka 54. Uh, Ketchikan, Craig, Metlakatla all in the lower to mid 50s. Hyder and Stewart closer to 59. Prince William Sound all the way up to 66 in Valdez. It was 81 warm degrees in Big Lake. 73 around Anchorage. 74 in Kenai. 60s for Homer and Seward. Talkeetna was in the upper 70s by the mid-afternoon. It was nearly 70 degrees in Fairbanks, 66 in Eagle. About the same there for Northway and Toke, 62 in Fort Yukon. Uh, Mid-50s, in fact, for Arctic Village, 54 for Anaktubik Pass. The North Slope was in the 30s and 40s. Coastal areas considerably colder, of course. At Kasuk, out toward Prudhoe Bay, Dead Horse, and further southward were in the mid-40s. 38 degrees around Kivalina, 37 for Kotzebue. It was 30 in Shishmaref, 49 in Nome. Big difference there, 62 in Galena. As you move down toward the YK Delta, 50s and 60s there, 70 as you get toward uh, Antioch, 70 for uh, uh, McGrath nearly 70 around Bethel this afternoon, 40 around Gamble. St. Lawrence Island there uh, still on the cool side. Close to 50 for St. Paul and St. George, low 70s for King Salmon and Dillingham, Lake Iliamna even warmer. 40s and 50s for the Alaska Peninsula, Sand Lake or Sand Point was 52. Uh, upper 40s around Cold Bay and False Pass, 50 for Unalaska and Dutch Harbor and only 39 out in Attu. Overnight low temps will stay in the 30s and 40s for most of the interior and southwest, 36 in Nome, 26 in Barrow, southeast in the mid to upper 40s, some places closer to 50 like Sitka, upper 40s for most of south central and still fairly dry, 43 in Kodiak and low 40s for the chain in the Alaska Peninsula. High temperatures tomorrow, uh, still a scorcher in southwest and the uh, middle Yukon Valley. Upper 60s and lower 70s for many. Uh, Fairbanks, you're looking at 71. South Central, mid 60s, but uh, again, slightly cooler than what we've seen today. And that trend continues. Upper 50s and low 60s for Southeast. Kodiak, 52. The North Slope, still at or even above freezing. Mid 30s for many locations there. Nome, 57. And St. Paul, you're looking at 46 degrees for your Friday. On to flying weather. IFR conditions expected across the North Slope, across the Western Bearing and the Western Chain including Unalaska and Dutch Harbor in the morning and across the eastern Gulf, though most of southeast should at least be VFR to MVFR, though Chilkoot and White Pass expected to have some limitations. MVFR for the southern half of southeast tomorrow. Watch for some showers and thunderstorms across the eastern Alaska range. Conditions improve across the north tomorrow afternoon, and IFR is still lingering around the Kotzebue Sound region and the Chukchi Coast, but improvements for all up there by the afternoon and look for IFR across the central chain and hugging the Alaska Peninsula coastline with MVFR for Dutch Harbor and Alaska. Anaktuvik Pass VFR, but just to the north. Watch for changes throughout the day. We expect similar conditions coming in and out of Attigan Pass. For Lake Clark and Merrill Pass VFR, things look really good around rainy and windy pass tomorrow afternoon. Isabel Pass, we expect to see VFR all day long. Mentasta Pass may start with some MVFR, but uh, watching for showers and storms in the afternoon on the north side. Otherwise, VFR conditions there. And for Tanita Pass, things look pretty good. Portage Pass looking okay as we head toward the beginning of the weekend. And Chilkoot and White Pass, IFR to start, but big improvements by the afternoon. 
freezing levels indicate a lot of warm air is sitting across the interior. No surprise with the temperatures we see at the surface, right? But across the north slope, you can see that uh, freezing level gradient is pretty sharp right around the Brooks Range, anywhere from two to 6,000 feet. So watch for a lot of changes there and uh, fly accordingly. Out across the bearing, anywhere from two to 4,000 feet across the region, 6,000 foot levels there across uh, the southern side of the Alaska Peninsula. Icing potential is really focused across the eastern uh, Gulf of Alaska, between six and 7,000 feet there. Most of the interior is really just bone dry at this point, and about 5,000 feet out across the western Bering Sea in the central chain there. Very limited uh, areas for any serious icing potential uh, as we go. So good news there. Uh, the jet stream has our main highway of weather crossing the North Pacific and still heading pretty far south in the Gulf. But that last little bit there as it comes up and makes that southerly jog northward uh, into uh, southern parts of southeast, that's where all that moisture is coming from. So we're getting kind of the slosh around here in the Gulf, which is pretty typical. Um, and then out across the west, no big cold surges. We don't have a northerly flow uh, coming off the Arctic Ocean at this point into western Alaska, thanks to high pressure parked up across the north slope and the northern interior. So you see that at 9,000 feet, low pressure sitting here across the central Gulf. The strongest winds really on the map are across southern southeast, 10 to 40 knots there with a very sharp pickup in winds as you head inland. Across the interior, very light winds, 5 to 10, even uh, winds coming in from the north slope, only about 5 to 10 knots there. And then we have a little bit more of a breeze coming in around low pressure for the Aleutians and Bristol Bay, anywhere from 5 to about 15 knots. At 3,000 feet, uh, winds aren't quite as sharp here across southeast. You can see they're a little bit further south before you get into that 40 knot range. Northerlies across the northern Gulf or easterlies across the northern Gulf, 5 to 25 knots. Still looking at light winds across the interior from east to west and then out west uh, 30 to 35 knots across the central and eastern uh, chain with light winds for the north slope. Turbulence potential then is really going to focus across the outer coast of southeast and around the Dixon entrance. Some of that could reach occasional moderate below 4,000 feet. And then east of Atka as you approach Nikolsky, uh, also a round of occasional moderate in that region as low pressure is uh, trying to push its way eastward. You'll have some chop in that direction. Let's look at your aviation forecast. I've got an update on the sea ice map as well as your marine forecast. Stay tuned. Jupiter and Saturn. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Hey James, what's the largest planet in the solar system? That would be Jupiter. It's actually about 1300 times larger than the Earth, and you can even fit all the planets and asteroids inside it. But Dean, what is the second largest planet in the solar system? That would be Saturn. Ah, Saturn, my favorite planet. Rings to forever, lots of cool moons. And it just so happens that our two largest planets will be in the sky tonight. That's right, Dean. Jupiter and Saturn will be shining after dark this whole month. And we want to show them to you up close and personal. Let's head to the sky. Okay, we have our sky set up for June 1st at 11 p.m., looking high in the southwestern sky. You'll find the moon in good position to view all week, since it'll be waxing. When the light of the moon is on the right, you'll see it at night. Hey, that's pretty catchy. Thanks. <laughs> our first planet we want to visit is the really bright thing to the left of the moon. That is giant Jupiter, and it'll look brighter than any other star at this time of night. As the nights pass, the moon will pass Jupiter. Here's June 2nd and June 3rd. Hey James, check out that conjunction. Wow. <laughs> They'll be so close together, I'll need to dance. Of course, they just look like they're close together. The moon will be about 240,000 miles from us, while Jupiter will be about 450 million miles away. So now we're going to cross those 450 million miles and take you in for a closer look at the giant planet and its many moons. Faster than the speed of light, we're approaching Jupiter. Now you can see many of its 67 known moons looking like little fireflies circling a planet. Imagine if we had 67 moons in our sky. As we get closer, we start to see the planet itself and its stripes, marking the lines of latitude on Jupiter. And coming around the side is the great red spot. 
The Great Red Spot is a humongous cyclone of gases that well up from the inside and churn the outer surface of the planet. It has been there for at least 140 years, though many other spots have popped up from time to time. Right now, the Great Red Spot is about the size of two Earths, although it has been shrinking lately. If this continues, the red spot may be tough to see, turn pale in color, or disappear altogether. But Dean, don't get too close, you'll get sucked in. Well, that was fun. Welcome back. Anyway, now we want to look for our other giant planet, but it'll be a little tougher to find than Jupiter. When you face southeast at 11 p.m., you'll spot Saturn just above the horizon. It's definitely not as bright as Jupiter, and that's because it is a slightly smaller planet and is a whopping 840 million miles away. If we can visit Jupiter in a few seconds, why not fly to Saturn? Although to the naked eye, Saturn doesn't look like anything other than a steady, glowing yellow star, it really comes to life when you look at it through a telescope. Whenever I see Saturn for the first time each year, it takes my breath away. I think, is that even real? It looks like someone put a sticker on the end of the telescope. For a real close-up view, we're hitching a ride with NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which has been in orbit around Saturn since 2004. Cassini is giving us views like never before of the storms on the planet, its 62 discovered moons, and the dynamic rings. Although they look solid like a road, the rings are made of individual bits of ice and rock. They are rings of gravel, tiny moonlets that circle the planet. So look for giant Jupiter tonight in the southwest after dark. And search out Saturn low in the southeast. Oh, the places we'll go when we keep, keep looking, looking up. The warm weather is having its impact on the Chukchi Sea. The ice north of the Bering Strait is eroding very quickly again. Some big changes once again uh, compared to the last couple days. And the ice inside of Kotzebue Sound is really starting to move around quite a bit as well. Concentrations less than 80% are found closer to the uh, northern Chukchi coast along the uh, Kotzebue Sound region. And you can still see some uh, lower concentrations of ice just east of Nome. Uh, all the way into the eastern and northern sections of Norton Sound. Still a little bit of ice hugging the eastern end of St. Lawrence Island, too. You need the latest information, head to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice uh, for this information and a whole lot more, and sometimes even high-resolution satellite imagery that can help you make some better decisions when it counts. Here's a look at uh, southeast weather in uh, for Friday. As light southerly winds in the Lynn Canal. Looks like a pretty nice day. Save for the clouds and a little bit of rain in the region. Uh, the winds and seas should be okay. Northeasterly is inside of Stevens Passage. Two-foot seas there. Seven-foot seas in the Clarence Strait with a southeast wind up to 25. And 20 to 25 knot winds coming up the outer coast. Uh, until you get into uh, the icy Cape, Cape Fairweather region, more of a northeasterly flow with the six-foot seas. Southerlies outside of the Dixon entrance. Eight-foot seas there on that 25 knot wind. For Saturday, winds will diminish a little bit across the outer coast. More of an offshore flow developing here from east to west. In the Lynn Canal, uh, some of the stronger winds there, southerly 20 knots, 4-foot seas, southeasterlies in the Clarence Strait hold up at 25 with 5-foot seas, and northerlies around Stevens Passage, I look for 3-foot seas there. For south-central, winds remain light and variable inside of Prince William Sound. Again, generally speaking, not bad weather at all. Southerlies across the northern Cook Inlet region, southwesterlies coming up toward Kenai, 20 knots with a 5-foot sea, and southeasterlies west of the Barrens. The stronger winds will be uh, across the western Gulf, 20 knots there with 5 to 6-foot seas, even looking at light and variable winds inside of Shelikov Strait with small seas at three feet. That improves even more on Saturday. So, gosh, if you have to go through Shelikov Strait, Saturday may be your day. Southeasterly is west of the Barrens, 15 knots with a three-foot sea. Look for light and variable winds across the north and western Gulf, five to six-foot seas there. And two days in a row for Prince William Sound, 10 knots and two-foot seas there for Saturday. In Bristol Bay, 15 knots with a westerly flow, three-foot seas expected. Variable winds on 15 knots across uh, Castle Cape to Chignik, uh, five-foot seas, six-foot seas down the coast with a westerly wind up to 20 knots. You'll see similar conditions on the Bering Sea coast. For Saturday, a little bit more of a southerly change, 10 to 20 knots in the region. 
three to four foot seas across the Bering Sea coast, and you're looking at five to seven for the Pacific coast. This is all in advance of low pressure trying to work its way from west to east across the chain. And as we get into the chain, northerly is already developing from Kiska to Attu, 20 knots with a 7-foot sea. South and westerly winds working their way through the central and eastern regions, 15 to 20 knots on the Bering Sea coast, 4 to 5-foot seas there. And you're looking at 20 to 25 across the Pacific coast, 7 to 9-foot seas there on Friday. As you get into Saturday, you can see the uh, change happening as low pressure still working its way eastward. It's uh, right about in here. You can see the northwesterly winds coming in behind it. Uh, six to seven foot seas in most areas on a 25 knot wind from the north and west. It will hold on to that south and easterly flow from Nikolsky to Unalaska, 20 to 25 with four to as high as 11 foot seas south of Nikolsky and Unalaska for Saturday. Northerly winds are feeding into this as well across the west coast and the Bering Sea, 15 to 20 in the region, 15 knots around St. Lawrence Island with a three foot sea. Four foot seas around St. Paul and St. George northerlies along the south and western coast with four foot seas there. For Saturday, a little bit of a southerly push makes its way up into the Kuskokwim Delta, 15 knots with a three foot sea. Northeasterlies continue north of Nunavak Island to St. Matthew and St. Lawrence Island, 20 knots with a four to five foot sea on Saturday. Light and variable winds around the Pribilofs, not too bad. Easterlies around the, the uh, Beaufort Sea coast for Friday, 10 knots, uh, looking for a light easterly wind from Wainwright to Point Lay as well. An onshore flow coming into Cotsview Sound, 15 knots with a two foot sea becoming northerly on Saturday. Uh, it continues northward through Cape Lisbon and Point Hope as well. Winds pick up across the Beaufort Sea coast and the northern sections of the Chukchi coast up to 20 to 25 knots. All of that coming in from the east on Saturday. Recapping tonight's weather, the best chance for showers will be in southeast tonight. Maybe a pop-up shower, maybe briefly a thunderstorm across the uh, eastern and southeastern parts of the mainland. Flurries and some fog for the north slope with high pressure there. And a weak area of low pressure is marching its way across the chain as we get into Friday. We'll see a better chance of wet weather in southeast, developing clouds and showers in south central. And more of that to come for your Saturday. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. See you right here tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.